anemia and the different types of anemia. Now, anemia can be classified according to the size of the red blood cells, or it can be due to the mechanism of action, or it can be classified as hemolytic anemia. Now, the definition of anemia is where there is a def def deficiency of red cells or of hemoglobin in the blood, resulting in pallor and weakness or weariness, in, so it's a different word. So, in this definition itself, there's two different meanings. It can, someone can have anemia when they have deficiency of red blood cells, i.e. the bone marrow or erythroboiosis is decreased, or they have a normal amount of uh, red blood cells, but the hemoglobin, the functional part of the red blood cell, is not functioning properly. The classification of anemia, according to clinical labs, i.e. when you go into a clinical lab and take a full, full blood count test, include three main things that they look for. Hemoglobin concentration, hematocrit, and the size of red blood cell known as MCV and MCHC, which we'll go into later in this video. Hematocrit simply means the ratio of volume of erythrocytes to the whole blood, so it's basically comparison, the percentage of red blood cells inside the whole blood, and you know blood is not just made up of, it's made up of different compartments, which we'll discuss later in this video. Normal ranges are not to be understood right now in this video, but later on you should look carefully and pause the video. So, like I said, the three main things are hemoglobin concentration, hematocrit, MCV, and MCHC. Now, a normal hemoglobin concentration for a adult or adolescent's age, for a male, is usually 132 to 173 grams per litre, or depending on what units you're using. The female is slightly lower at 117 to 155. You need to come kind of know these figures off by head. So anyone who lies within this reference value is said to be normal. So on screen now you have normal adult red cell values. I've highlighted or circled the ones important for us as clinicians or students of biochemistry, whatever subject you study. Or, um, you need to look for hemoglobin. So here we have 13.75 to 17.5. Hematocrit, again, is the ratio of volume of erythrocytes, i.e. red blood cell compared to the whole blood. And you look for MCV and MCHC. Keep these four for now inside your head. MCH as well. So one, two, and the four ones I've circled are the ones you need to remember for the later on in this video. Now, anemia can be dependent on mechanisms, such as red, dependent on the red cell life cycle dependence. So we know the red blood cell usually is produced in the bone marrow. So before that, the kidney releases something known as erythropoietin, which travels to the bone marrow cells, which causes erythropoietin is necessary for the bone marrow to promote erythropoiesis. A normal red blood cell usually has functions about 120 days. Once after 120 days, the shape of it is deformed and it gets broken down. It then gets broken down into by the liver, spleen, and the bone marrow itself. The liver and spleen both contain macrophages. The liver's macrophages are known as Kupfer cells. Now, once they're broken down, they're broken down into two compartments shown on the screen, hemoglobin, and hemoglobin can be then further broken down into heme and globin. Globin is further broken down into heme amino acids, which then recirculate back into the bloodstream, goes back into the bone marrow where it's recycled and reused for erythroposis. Heme then undergoes a process where it's broken down into bilirubin as well as iron. Iron is then combined within the liver by into a um, transporter molecule known as uh, transferrin, or it can be stored as ferritin within the liver. The, uh, so there's two things, heme gets broken into iron and bilirubin, iron is either stored as ferritin in the liver or transported via transporter known as transferrin, then goes back into the blood and then again back into the bone marrow again recycled and reused. Bilirubin on the other hand has picked up by the liver and then enters the enterohepatic circulation or the common bowel duct pathway into the bowel duct and then undergoes bilirubin metabolism which is shown on the screen now. This is not for this, um, you know, need to understand the bilirubin metabolism right now in this video. If you do want to understand it, you can pause the video and learn the diagram on screen. Now, the anemia dependent can be because, as in, if someone has a problem because of decreased erythroposis or bone marrow suppression, then they will be less erythroposis, so therefore they form red, less red blood cells. Hyperparathyroidism can also lead to decreased formation of red blood cells. Kidney failure because you need erythroprotein, so if you have some sort of kidney failure, therefore less erythroprotein is released. Vitamin B12 deficiency because food nutrients, if when you look in the diagram here on the bottom right, you can see iron, B12 and folic acid absorbed from intestine and enters blood. And vitamin B12 is a very important factor that's involved in making red blood cells. Iron deficiency is also important because iron is one of the main components used in order to make red blood cells. Now, other causes of anemia, such as hemolytic anemia, could be due to hemorrhages or some sort of accident or trauma. This can be intravascular hemolysis or extravascular hemolysis. Intravascular hemolysis include DIC, which is disseminated intravascular coagulopathy, TTP, which is uh, thrombotic thrombocytic purpura and hemolytic uremic syndrome. You don't need to understand this at this current concept. I'll make like, uh, but there are I'll make other videos to uh, explain these situations. Extravascular hemolysis include hypersplenism, so i.e. when the spleen is working um, at a high rate, so therefore the macrophages in the spleen are constantly breaking down the red blood cell. So the production of the bone marrow uh, erythroposis is much lower than the breaking down of red blood cells in the spleen. Or someone who has a hereditary condition known as sickle cell anemia, or even in malaria. Malaria, you know, is an infection where bacteria breaks down red blood cells. Now, components of blood. Blood, you know, usually consists of 55% plasma, 
1% of platelets and white blood cells and 44% red blood cells, hence why we always, always talk about erythrohematocrit because people when they think about blood, the uh, liquid, liquidy red thing that comes out of your body, they think it's completely 100% blood, but it's not. Now you can see plasma is usually split into water, ions, proteins, nutrients, waste and gases. White blood cells and platelets are only 1% with red blood cell. For in this purpose of the video, since we're talking about anemia, we're interested in red blood cell. Red blood cell has an important molecule directly in the middle called hemoglobin. We know what hematocrit is. Hemoglobin is simply two, contains, consists of two pairs of polypeptide chains alongside four prosthetic heme groups, each containing one atom of ferrocyan. So you can see on the screen now, we have four prosthetic groups, each containing one molecule of ferrocyan. Each ferrocyan can, can uh, transport up to one molecule of oxygen, so one whole hemoglobin can transform four oxygen molecules. Normal fetal hemoglobin, known as HBF, consists of two alpha-2 chains and a gamma-2 chain. These are mainly in fetus and newborns up to the age of 18 months old. HBA and HBA2 are the most common ones, but HBA, meaning alpha-2, beta-2, which is what's highlighted on screen, is what's found in majority of the adults, 95 to 98%. HBA2, i.e. alpha-2, delta-2, is also quite normal and found in low concentrations. Again, normal values of hemoglobin, pause the video and familiarize yourself. 130 to 173 for males and 117 to 155 for females, or closely around about the same. You can differentiate between older males and younger males and younger females and older females. Now, typical blood results. So, as a clinician or a doctor or a nurse, you might be presented in front of you with a blood result. The ones we're interested in, especially for anemia, is hemoglobin. We know First of all, you need to configure the age of the patient as well as their ecological background, the population that they're coming from, as well as their sex and gender. So once you figure that out, you can check the HP is 144, reference value between 115 and 165, so therefore most likely it's a female. So anyway, regardless of the situation, it's a normal count. Then you look for MCV, which is the size, 91.9, again in femtolysis, in normal range, MCH, normal, and MCHC, just about normal as well. So this person has very pretty much normal. Now we can look at iron levels, serum ferritin iron 76. So pretty much what we're interested in for anemia, these three factors are normal. Now another one on the screen, pause the video and clarify whether this patient is normal or abnormal yourself. Parameters used for calculation. There is known as Wintrow calculation. Wintrow is a scientist that came up with certain parameters for classifying anemia according to the size of the red blood cells. And this included size, content of the red blood cell, as well as hemoglobin concentration. First, he defined the first parameter as MCV. MCV uh, was the average volume of red blood cells calculated from the hematocrit and the red blood cell count, usually measured in femtoliters. Reference range includes between 82 to 96. The next one he used was MCH. MCH was the content or the weight of the hemoglobin of the average red blood cell and is calculated from the concentration of red cell count, measured in picograms between 27 to 33. The other ones he invented was MCHC, the mean cell hemoglobin concentration, which is the average concentration of hemoglobin in a given volume between 300 and 360, and RDW, or what's known as the diameter width, reference diameter width. Now, every, so on screen now, you can see on the left, on the bottom left, you can see that normal red blood cells, the diameter of it, i.e. the width, usually remains between this and this. So if someone has some sort of anemia because of the different shape of the uh, red blood cell or because of uh, increased weight or increased cell volume, then on the right you can see that this patient here presents with different types of red blood cells in the blood smear. And this is known as anisocytosis. So regardless of whatever type of anemia you have, you will always end up having anisocytosis, i.e. the diameter of the red blood cell within the blood smear or a sample would always be different. So the variation in the Johnson's bell graph would be increased. Now when you have abnormal shapes or abnormal variation in shape, this is known as polycocytosis. So anisocytosis is to do with the diameter width, so the width of the red blood cell, polycocytosis is to do with the shape, whether it's ovulocyte, stomatocyte, sickle cell, or anconocyte, whatever. Now the main parameters used in order to define anemia within a lab test itself, the three things that they usually use is, first they check for hemoglobin levels, so if someone presented with hemoglobin is usually low, decreased hemoglobin, then they have a decreased hematocrit, then the next thing you look for is the size factors, MCV, MCH, MCHC, RDW and reticulocyte. RDW is always going to be increased regardless of the situation, so anisocytosis will always take place. MCV will be decreased, but the only thing I want you to know is these factors are the stuff that you look for. Now, different types of anemia depending on the MCV. Now, there's microcytic, or there's normal, normocytic, microcytic, macrocytic. Now, in the middle, we have a microcytic type of anemia. In this, this is where the red blood cell, the size of the red blood cell is usually smaller than a normal person's red blood cell hence why microcytic, and the color of the red blood cell will be hypochromic. So nicrocytic, hypochromic. Normal red blood cells are normocytic because they're normal in shape and they'll be normochromic. 
and macrocytic will be mean they're very big but they don't have any color or differences so microcytic hypochromic mcv usually is very low below 80 femtoliters and mch again below 27 the cause factors include iron deficiency thalassemia anemia and chronic disease normocytic normochromic so someone who presents with anemia but when you did a blood smear for some apparent reason their blood red blood cells seem very normal mcv seems normal mch seems normal but yet the patient presents with symptoms of anemia this could be due to iron deficiency mainly or many type of hemolytic anemias or anemia of chronic disease or acute blood loss or bone marrow failure etc macrocytic on the other hand can be split into when the mcv is usually above 95 femtoliters this can be split into two different components megaloblastic and non-megaloblastic megaloblastic include vitamin b12 deficiency or folate deficiency and non-megaloblastic including alcohol liver disease myelodysplasia and aplastic anemia normocytic anemia like we said is when the red blood cells normal usually due to the blood loss up on the screen pause the video and learn the different factors that cause it now you know the red blood cell is producing the bone marrow but prior to becoming a mature red blood cell it's known as a reticulocyte so when in lab you think that someone has a normal city normal chromic type of anemia because you looked at the mcv hemoglobin is low hematocrit is low now mcv is also normal ranges you then take a measurement of the reticulocyte count so when you take the reticulocyte count if the reticulocyte count i.e the number of reticular bone marrow cells before it has matured to red blood cell is less than 2.5 then you can know it's due to the decreased stimulation or some sort of iron deficiency or bone marrow damage or metabolic defect or renal disease so imagine someone has a renal disease so not, not not enough producing enough erythropoietin if on the other hand they have increased 2.5 so a high amount of reticular site this could then mean their bone marrow and everything's functioning right the shape is normal but since yet they still have anemia this could be due to blood loss or intravascular hemolysis or metabolic defect or some sort of autoimmune destruction Factors impairing normal or reticular site response include marrow diseases such as uh, bone marrow diseases, hyperplasia of the bone marrow, carcinoma, lymphoma, myeloma, deficiency of iron, vitamin B12, folate, lack of erythropoietin due to kidney disease, reduced tissue um, or, or oxygen consumption due to myxodema, and other conditions. Microcytic anemia, on the other hand, as you can see, on the left we have a normal, where the master point to a normal blood smear with normal type of red blood cell. Microcytic means, can you see the circles are much bigger and the red blood cells are much more smaller and they're hypochromic. This could be due to iron deficiency or some sort of thalassemia or sideroblastic anemia and lead poisoning. Macrocytic on the other hand is due to two types megaloblastic anemia or non-megaloblastic anemia and this is when the MCV is usually above 95 as I said previously or 99. This could be due to vitamin B12 deficiency known as pernicious anemia or folate deficiency. Also non-megaloblastic include alcohol abuse, reticular cytosis, liver disease and hypothyroidism. So you can see on the right that this image shows that the macrocytes are quite large, fairly in large compared to the others. Other causes of anemia dependent, we've mentioned this before. Now the main thing to test is if you have some sort of hemolytic anemia, the one main measurements that you need to be taking as a clinical um, physician or a laboratory assistant is you need to be looking at haptoglobin. Haptoglobin levels are usually decreased in hemolysis. Also lactate dehydrogenase is usually elevated and you can check for bilirubin levels, bilirubin will be increased, so these three things. So if you detect that person has some sort of hemolytic anemia due to intravascular hemolysis or extravascular hemolysis, in this case this person would have present with anemia but then they will fall into the normal cytic range, this would mean that you need to check for the haptoglobin, lactate dehydrogenase and bilirubin levels. Pause the video now to familiarize yourself with what you're meant to see. Signs and symptoms of anemia include pallo, rapid bounding, pulse, low blood pressure, slight fever, and some dependent anemia and systolic murmurs. But the most easy, easily and recognizable one in patients are easily they're fatigued, dyspnea or shortness of breath on exertion, or sometimes that when they stand up, like orthostatic hypertension, or when they start running, they usually feel very faint. They usually complain of vertigo, palpitations, and headache. So the ones you need to always remember are fatigue and low energy, headaches, constant migraine, dizziness. They always complain of chest pain or systolic murmurs, shortness of breath. Others include weakening, always they we, they feel very fatigued and very weak and fragile, shortness of breath again, pallor under the eye or in the skin, they might look very anemic or pale skin or lighter complexion of their skin than usual. So up on screen now we have one more image, familiarize yourself with all the symptoms of anemia. Once again thank you for watching the video, please subscribe to the channel, comment, like, share.